Use the Mobilytics pregame function to get a competitive edge over your opponents and mentally adjust your playstyle as needed for the upcoming games that you're about to play. It lets you know things like if your opponent is on a win streak or even if it's their first time playing that specific champion. Garen is widely considered to be the easiest champion in League of Legends. He only costs 450 IP, making him a perfect starting champion for anyone new to the game. All of his mechanics are incredibly straightforward and really easy to pick up. Because of how linear his playstyle is, most high-ranking players do not choose to pick up Garen due to how easy it is to outplay this champion. However, one particular Garen player has figured out a way to adapt Garen to a point that he can survive in high elo and can actually do fairly well in high elo as well. Uh, hi everybody, I'm uh, Rist or Risty on Twitch. I'm a Masters Garen OCP. I've been playing Garen for about two and a half years. I have the most champion mastery points in the world with Garen. Risty is the only NA player to hit Masters with Garen this season. And he has played a lot of Garen games. One of the biggest reasons that Garen is not successful in the high elo is because Garen has a lot of bad matchups. And in some of these matchups, Garen can literally do nothing. All he can realistically do is sit at his tower, wait, and farm. Through his experience and insane number of games that he's played on Garen, Risty has been able to figure out champion-specific strategies to beat Garen's worst matchups. Because of how straightforward Garen's kit is, Garen players' playstyles have pretty much all crystallized into one form of Garen. Get tanky, get grasp of the undying, buy black cleaver, buy more tank, max your spin, and play extremely straightforward. Risty rarely ever does any of these things. Risty has several differences in his own playstyle, and the first one would be his first item choice. Most Garen players buy Dorn Shield as their first item. Risty often goes for three rejuvenation beads and a health potion. Three rejuvenation beads actually outscale Dorn Shield's health regeneration at level seven. If you're up against a laner who has complete trading advantage over you, and you don't want to take damage from them because just procking your Dorn Shield simply isn't worth it at that point, rejuvenation beads are always pumping out health to heal you compared to Dorn Shield that you need to take a physical uh, or a magic attack. Now, obviously, I won't take Reju Beads in every single matchup. Uh, Dorn Shield definitely has the advantage uh, for the first uh, six levels. Dorn Shield's great and all. However, I don't need Dorn Shield to basically survive at any point past level six. The resale value of Dorn Shield is 180 gold. Selling three Rejuvenation Beads because each Reju Bead is 105 gold, I get 315 gold back, which basically pushes my build a little bit further. It's I take every advantage I can when it comes to carrying these solo queue games. One of the main reasons that Risty takes risks in his build is because he's looking for a specific item, and it's an item that most Garen players have traditionally not built, and that item is Trinity Force. Many of the other standard Garen players simply choose to go for Black Cleaver. Why does Risty choose to go for Trinity Force, a completely different type of item from what traditional Garen players have been playing? Many people think Trinity Force is a troll item, and I get pinged this item so much when I build it, especially in low elo. Because it has mana! Oh no! An item has mana, that means we can't build it. The Spellblade active is really amazing. You combo that with uh, Predator and Q, and you are nuclear striking people for damage that they don't anticipate. If you're looking to carry and go for a build that bursts people, you are not looking for health. You are looking for burst potential. Three rejuvenation beads are really uh, versatile for me because I'm looking to get that Trinity Force ASAP. In the past, what Garen players sometimes did was they would buy Yumu's Ghost Blade for extra burst. While Yumu's Ghost Blade was definitely a pretty decent item on Garen, it doesn't give Garen players as much cooldown reduction. Nor does it give you the extra stats for split pushing like the Spell Blade and the Attack Speed. While Trinity Force is significantly more expensive, it does also give you significantly more utility when compared to Ghost Blade. Another key difference between Risty's playstyle and other traditional Garen's playstyles is what ability he prioritizes first. We've all heard the phrase, spin to win, but Risty doesn't prioritize his spin whatsoever. In fact, Risty usually maxes his Q first over his spin. If Garen is a spin to win champion, why doesn't Risty max it first? Here's the reason why he maxes Q first. When you're putting points into your spin, that means you're putting most of your extra damage into this singular ability, which obviously means you're going to be using it more often. When you're hitting someone on Garen with your E, you're almost always going to also be hitting minions as well. Wave manipulation is a huge part of top lane, and it is an even bigger part to Garen. Because Garen doesn't have reliable escapes, and because he doesn't have any great ways to fend off a 1v2, Garen players need to make sure that they have the minion wave at an optimal position so they don't get ganked. If you're constantly spamming your E in lane, you're gonna be killing the enemy player's minions. 
and when you kill those minions, you're pushing up your own lane, putting yourself at a bad situation. By taking Q, you can make really short harassment trades. Walk in, Q, E, and run away. Uh, Garen typically wants to go for that two second trade, then back off with spinning, so that way the retaliation isn't as bad. Because while the person's silenced, they can't cast their abilities, so you just want to typically back off. Typically, I might forfeit lane priority just to be able to get through the first early levels, because Garen's level one isn't really amazing. Garen's level two is absolutely terrible. Level four is when you get your uh, sixth spin on Judgment, because it gains spins by levels. So obviously, I'm looking to gain W stacks and basically just assess how well my enemy laner knows his champion. It's just uh, an assessment phase because, you know, Garen doesn't really have those outplay type of mechanics because Garen's a very stat checky uh, champion. I typically uh, pay attention to wave manipulation and how they time abilities. Jack's matchup, I typically max Q or spin depending on how good they are at landing their counter strike. If I see the Jack's player is typically new to the champion, doesn't have a skin, he do isn't landing counter strike, I will max Q because I have confidence in being able to land it. Compared to Jack's players who have really good reactions, I'll go ahead and max spin to be on the safe side because with my spin, I can still hit them even though they're still taking reduced damage from their counter strike. But uh, Garen actually has a ton of crappy matchups. Once you start getting W stacks and a few points in Q, uh, you typically just have to be very, very conservative with your trades, unless the person doesn't know what they're doing. Like if it's a first time ribbon, then you could just roll over them. My play style often takes Ignite, not Teleport. So getting across the map uh, really quickly by just constantly spamming my Q definitely makes a subtle difference that can sometimes make the difference. Garen is not really a good teleport champion. Typically when you're using a teleport gank, you have something like Galio's ultimate or Malphite's ultimate. And in my past experiences with teleport, I've been using it 90% of the time to get back to lane. And I feel like that just isn't efficient. Risty relies heavily on the movement speed from his Q and items like Deadman's Plate in order to actually be able to rotate to the objectives that his team is looking to take. The third reason is another big difference between Risty and other traditional Garen players, which is his rune setup. In almost every single one of Risty's games, you will see him take either Predator or Phase Rush. Predator offers so much utility and movement speed for Garen. It allows Garen to basically retain Ignite, but be able to travel across the map and uh, make it to objectives in time, or possibly catch someone off guard. And I'm definitely using it more and more, especially climbing through low elo, because this game is all about flipping the enemy's house over in 10 minutes. So I really like being able to roam top lane or mid lane to be able to hunt the villain. Play as a hunter because your damage against them is absolutely ridiculous if you activate Predator and jump on them with Q. So I have to say, I, I think for a Garen expert, Predator might be the best for carrying, at least solo carrying. Risty often likes to play mid lane Garen for easier climbing. While he is putting more pressure on himself by putting himself in the middle of the map, it also gives him a lot more options for roaming with Predator. He always rushes Tiamat first for that extra wave clear because a Tiamat proc plus your E easily clears out the backline minions. Along with the roam potential that Predator and Qmax gives you, Garen actually becomes a pretty decent mid lane bruiser to take. Now that we've talked about some of the differences in Risty's build, let's talk about some of the differences in his actual playstyle. Top lane is all about matchup knowledge and knowing when, where, and how you can trade against enemy champions. Risty has solutions to pretty much every single one of Garen's bad matchups. One of the worst matchups for Garen is his ranged matchup, but Risty actually has a specific trading mechanic that gives him a slight edge when going in against ranged champions. I use a uh, stealth Q mechanic that not so many Garen players actively think about. This is why Qmax is really good. I'll go ahead and spin in front of absolutely nothing sometimes, uh, because if you're spinning in front of minions, that's like the biggest window uh, for the enemy lane to go in for auto attacks and basically harass you because they see that as a vulnerable window. But I use that against them by hiding my Q animation in my spin. When I feel comfortable trading against the rain matchup, I go ahead and accelerate myself in my spin. I just stay still for a minute, then immediately accelerate myself. As I touch their model, I cancel spin, bop them with Q, and then back off. That's what I typically do versus uh, Quinn, Jace, Teemo, uh, even sometimes. It really catches people off guard, and I really feel like not enough Garen players actively think about a trading stance like that in ranged matchups. One other matchup that Garen players struggle a lot with is the Singed matchup. But Risty has his own way of dealing with Singed. Uh, Garen has a really difficult time versus Singed because you just really can't hold him down in team fights. but with Glacial Augment, you, you can lock him down and soften him, him up. I typically go Black Cleaver after Righteous Glory. It applies that ice field, right? That beam of ice that he cannot cleanse with tenacity. He has to walk off of it. He has a very difficult choice. Does he build slow resistance to basically get off of it in a faster manner and basically leave himself tenacity 
less uh, for the whole game? Or does he build tenacity and just have to deal with it while I'm locking him down with a big slow that he can't get rid of because tenacity means nothing versus Glacial Augment? I do use Glacial Augment in high-low because typically if I'm playing with a high-low team, they know how to follow up on engage compared to down in silver where somebody might be checking Facebook when I decide to engage. So it definitely depends on what elo range you are in. Uh, because the Glacial Augment build definitely sacrifices a lot of personal power for team utility. This is what makes Risty good, is that he's adapting to every single individual game. He has a specific build and a game plan going into every single tough matchup. Here are his most commonly used builds. This is the Glacial Augment build that he was using. Typically, it is used for Singed, but it can also be used for a few ranged matchups such as Kennen and Teemo. This is his Phase Rush page that is typically taken against bruisers such as Jax and Fiora. And this last one is his Engage page, typically used for champions in the top lane who he has confidence in 1v1ing and for his mid lane Garen. For his build, he either starts D Shield or 3 Reju Beads, D Shield most commonly used in tougher matchups. If he is top lane, he will rush a Kindle Gem for the wave clear since he's not maxing E, and if he's mid lane, he will get Tiamat instead. In about 90% of his games, he is going for Merc Treads. In a game where he is really trying to hard carry though, he will sometimes go for Lucidity Boots. For your core item, go either Trinity Force or Black Cleaver, depending on the enemy's team composition. If you chose Trinity Force, you can actually pick up Black Cleaver as your last item as it is still a very strong item on Garen. Against certain struggling matchups, you could go either Righteous Glory or Deadman's Plate first if you need to rotate and tank for your team instead. Steric's Gage synergizes with pretty much everything that Garen does, so it is a must get. And Abyssal Mask gives you magic resistance, plus it amplifies the damage of your ultimate. Not only that, it can also proc Phase Rush, making it a nice alternative to Sunfire Cape, should you choose not to pick it up. Garen can be very rewarding because anybody looking to study their fundamentals and possibly learn things like um, understanding their wave manipulation, being able to stat check, being able to become patient as a as a player. Garen can really teach you how to do that because if you are not patient on Garen, you're going to die a ton. I think Garen is really easy to pick up in terms of combos, but he definitely has a hidden avenue of complexity to him, especially when you want to climb in high low. He's very one dimensional. So you have to you have to go above and beyond that, right? Your your macro means so much. Your itemization means so much. Your runes mean so much. I, I really recommend for Garen players to never get comfortable with their skill level because there's always something you can optimize with your playing Garen because he's just so open-ended. In conclusion, I, I think I'm considered the mad scientist of the Garen community. I do all this crazy, wacky stuff that not many people would normally think of, but that's what's allowed me to basically adapt to these matchups. You gotta be really creative. You can't be building cookie-cutter stuff on Garen. It's predictable, and it just isn't optimal. If you guys are interested in the video, I really welcome uh, you guys to check out my stream. One thing besides being a Garen player is that I'm a really positive and tilt-proof player in general. So I, I can definitely help people trying to perform themselves or just try to stay cool and ranked because I never rage. I'm highly informative and I can teach you guys a lot about Garen too and typically a lot of things more about the game in general. I keep a really, really chill stream. So if that's your cup of tea, I welcome you guys to stop by. And uh, thanks so much for watching the video. It was an honor to be here.